Hello and welcome to another episode of The Honest Musician. Today I want to tell you guys a story about buying an amplifier that uh, hopefully will intrigue some of you. So I was going to go buy an Egnator tweaker because I wanted a small amp and it was a, I can't remember the model name, but it was the small head and a 1x12 cabinet that was only a couple watts here or there. And I wanted something with an effects loop that could handle effects better and then I could take the practices and stuff and that wasn't very expensive so I didn't feel bad about knocking around and all that. And uh, the guy who was selling it was selling it for something like 350 and it was just a really good deal. So I headed over there with, uh, with some money in my pocket, planning to buy an amp. And when I showed up, I tried it out, it was okay, but he also had this thing right here, which is a VHT Standard 12. And I've been using this thing a lot. I've been using it for almost every gig over my 1973 Pro Reverb. And it's so good that I've been wanting to make a, a video for a while because I bought this thing for like $300. And that's such a steal. So the story with this amp is that VHT for a while made small metal practice tube amps that were somewhere around five or six watts that you could bring into your bedroom and crank up and get tube distortion out of it and everything and have it be really quiet or, or quiet enough to record with. And then they wanted to get into the custom boutique market and they started making these amplifiers with a business model where they would have everything, like all the parts, all the cabinetry and the chassis of the amp assembled in China and then they would send it to the US and then in San Francisco they would put it all together in a big factory. But what happened was uh, the factory shut down and they didn't sell enough of the amps and they just started selling off all their stock and they were selling these things for like a hundred dollars back in either 2006 or 2008 or somewhere around that time frame. Uh, and people bought them up and they bought up the parts and stuff like that like amp builders bought them up and disassembled them but some of them still stuck around a little bit here and there one of them is this the standard 12 and what it is is it's a 5e3 clone and from what i've read on the internet it's pretty much an exact replica except for very modern sorry not modern very minor changes here and there and i don't even know where so as far as I know, there's like one or two differences between this and a real Fender Tweed Deluxe, and I just have to say it's fantastic. <laughs> it really is. To give you a quick rundown on the specs of it, uh, it's 12 watts, two 6v6 power tubes, one 5Y 3GT rectifier tube, two 12AX7 preamp tubes for two inputs, two channels, um, a Celestian G12H30 speaker, which is a fantastic speaker, and a high-grade 11 ply finger jointed birch cabinet, and hand wired in the USA, and it's it's good. It's a good amp. The reason why I wanted to make this video is because I was thinking about other 5e3 clones, and I was just thinking about cheaper tube amps that still can last a long time and sound good, and that you can take to gigs and record with, and all that, and. Uh, I was thinking about the, the 5e3s and to get like a, a reissue is you know a couple thousand dollars to get an original is out the window for most people and even the clones are, are pretty high priced if you want to get a good one I mean I think you can go to China and get like a Chinese clone for you know not that much money you're still probably shelling out for at least five hundred dollars and then of course it's assembled on a PC bead board and will probably melt after a little while but this guy is hand wired it's lasted me for more than a couple gigs. It sounds great, it does everything I need it to. My only real personal gripe with it is that it doesn't have any reverb, but, but it's one of those amps you don't need reverb for. As far as this amp goes, um, someone modified it at some point and put a, uh, a master volume in the back of it, which I, I love it because I can practice at quieter volumes with it and um, I'm a pit musician and will probably be taking this amp to pit orchestras where they want you to use really nice equipment but at a low volume which is tough you know I'm not on Broadway or anything so I don't get cool fancy things like isolation cabinets I just have to bring my amp and then they always say it's too loud but this is great because I can use this for that I know that some people do things like they change out the preamp tubes or they uh, there's like Dumble mods that you can do to them and then there's like Plexi mods where you can get it to, I mean you can you can get in there with a soldering iron and really change this, this thing up and make it sound however you want it to. So as far as I know none of that has been done except for the master volume and the tubes were changed out. I think there are like soft tech preamp tubes and then electro harmonics uh, power, power tubes. 
the rectifier I think is also something else. Prob I, I think it's like a JJ. I cannot remember it. I, I, I'm not going to look at it because it doesn't really matter. The tubes have been upgraded and there's a master volume, but I'm going to be bypassing the master volume throughout the video. And uh, that's why I'm using my in-ears right now because it's going to get really loud. So based on that, I, I got something that sounds as good as a two or three thousand dollar custom handmade hand-wired amplifier for 300 bucks. And I checked reverb before I made this video and I saw some that were still going for 499, some that were going for 400, even some that were selling for 300, 350. And I just want to make this video to share it with all the gigging guitar players out there who may not be in a point in their career where they can afford like a, a Mesa or a Fender or, or some kind of gigging and recording amp that can do it all. And this thing is just sitting out there. Uh, the reason why I think the amp didn't sell well is because it's made by VHT and I don't know who VHT is and um, it's a Tweed Deluxe clone but just looking at it, it looks like some kind of metal amp and that's what I thought it was at first before the guy said it's a 5v3 clone. I was like, well what's a 5v3? And he goes, oh you don't know what that is? Plug in. So um, yeah, these things are sitting out there for next to nothing. And you can pick them up and they're they're fantastic. So all you cheapos, all you cheapskakes out there like me, pick these things up before they disappear forever and people tear them down and uh, use them to build other amplifiers or something like that. So let's get into the tone demo. The guitar I'm using is a Gary Kramer Crusader Limited. It's a made in Korea uh, HSS Strat clone. It's another cheap piece of gear that sounds really good. And I might make a video just on this guitar. Um, I'm going into a pedal board with all the effects bypassed for now, but we're going to get into pedals later to talk about headroom and how this amp handles pedals and all that. Then we've got an SM57 on the cabinet that's going straight into Reaper, and then we have a room microphone that's off camera that you can't see, but it's right there. And um, that's going into Reaper as well, and we're putting a little bit of room reverb on there to make the amp sound as it would if you were in the room with me. So let's get into it. Right now, I've got everything turned all the way down and we're gonna put the tone control at six. We're plugged into the high input on the bright channel and we're gonna turn that up uh, about halfway. So now what we're gonna do is just play a big E chord. So already halfway up on channel one, it's pretty dang distorted and it's pretty dang loud. And the reason for that, I believe, is because the 5e3, if you think of, a, of an amplifier, if you think of its job as to take a signal and then amplify it as pristinely and purely as you can do it, I think the 5e3 is the worst at that. It is, it is really bad at its job. So it distorts really, uh, really early. In fact, I think, I think it's fair to say that it starts to break up at around three. So if you're going to use it this way by only using the volume knob on one channel, what you got to do is be really good with your uh, guitar's volume or use a volume pedal and also understand how your tone pot works. So if I turn the volume on my guitar down about halfway, then it sounds like this. So that's one way you can use it. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the normal volume, or the, the bright volume channel, the bright channel volume, 
turn that down to about three, and then turn the second channel up all the way. Or I'll turn it up to about eight. So the way a 5P3 works is that all of the knobs are interactive. You have two volumes for the two different inputs, and then you have one tone control that, that's uh, global. So the louder you turn up the volume on a channel, the less effective the tone control is. So if you have the volume turned all the way up, then the tone control is out of the circuit and it doesn't affect anything anymore. And that's kind of annoying, but it's also really cool. <laughs> it's hard to explain, it's part of the amp. So this way, the tone control is really not affecting the normal channel all that much, but it can affect the bright channel. Now, the reason why I turned the normal channel all the way up is because since the two are interactive, the normal channel will affect the tone and the breakup point of the bright channel. It's just, I don't know how it works. There, there's a really good video, and I might link to it in the description of this video on how the 5 3 works if you decide to get this amp. I watched the video, it's like an hour long to figure out how this freaking thing works. And I still, I still don't quite understand it. It's just fun to mess around with it. So, on this setting with the guitar and the tone, uh, the volume and the tone all the way up on my guitar, it sounds like this. So that's pretty cool. I remember learning guitar, uh, being told by guitar teachers and everything, uh, you know, being seen on forums and all that, they keep saying that you should really be using your volume knob as much as you can because it not only controls your volume, but it controls the distortion and it controls the way the amp reacts. And a guy like me, I I grew up on solid state amps. I grew up on the Line 6 Spider where none of that really matters. and. It's just really cool to be, you know, to have an amp that does this so well. And part of that, I believe, is because of the, the tube rectifier helps with compression and it helps with the, uh, with the way the amp reacts and all that. And it's just fantastic. So, if you get an amp like this or if you get this amp, that's just something to keep in mind. That you'll have, that's a skill that you'll have to learn. You know, the idea is like you're playing rhythm. So yeah, hopefully I'm demonstrating this well, because uh, it's a skill I'm having to learn, because I love playing this amp. Next thing we're going to do is we're just going to frickin' dime it, and we're going to turn everything up to about 8. So we're around 8 or 9 on everything. Supposedly, this was an old studio musician setting, and it's what studio musicians would do as their, their go-to amp sound. 
And once again, the, it's gonna be pretty distorted, but the idea is that you control everything with your volume channel. So I'm gonna, or you control everything with your volume knob on your guitar. So I'm gonna have the guitar all the way down right now. That's pretty heavy right there. But then again, it's not that heavy. Now we're at like six. So that's pretty cool. Um, last but not least, what we're gonna do, uh, I'm gonna go back to the setting where I had the bright channel down. I'm gonna put the bright channel at like four-ish. Put the tone back to six. And I'm gonna grab a jumper cable, or the, you know, a patch cable, pedal cable. And I'm going to plug it into the low input of the bright channel. And the other half is going to go into the high input of the normal channel. Now what this is going to do is drastically affect the amount of gain we are putting into the amp right now. And by drastically I mean we're going to essentially double it. So this is what we got now. I mean, that's insane. Nah, let's just dive it again and turn everything back up. <laughs> let's see what we get. This is, this is probably going to be really loud. This is going to be great. So now I'm gonna unjumper it, take these cables out, 
and set it back to the cleanest setting I got it on. So, bright channels at about three or four. The nor uh, normal channels up about to nine-ish. Tone is at six. We're back to having the amp sound like this. And we're gonna try out some pedals. So, let's do the Joyo American Drive. This is a, so this is without the pedal. Now I've got a, a Joyo American Drive, which is a, once again, another cheap piece of gear that has lasted me a while, hasn't broken yet, and sounds pretty good for what it is. And I'm pretty sure it's designed to sound like this, this amp, so this might be a redundant thing to do, but let's give it a go. So this is with it engaged. Disengaged. Now we're gonna do the OCD overdrive to show how it handles overdrive pedals, which is pretty handsome. So without it. With it. going to handle all your drive and your overdrive pedals pretty darn well but the big question is is it going to handle modulation so i'm going to do a quick test with that i've got a dan electro big spender spinning speaker which is you know maybe not the best modulated effects for this demo but that's what we're going to do um so i've got it not ramped it's got a button so that you can have the speaker spinning slowly and then have it slowly go up to its fastest setting so here it is not ramped now we're going to get that speaker to turn up let's get a big spacey chord The answer really is, um, it's going to handle simple modulation and things of that nature. So it'll probably handle a flanger and all that. Um, where it fails, though, is reverb. That's kind of a bummer. This amp has no built-in reverb, and it is not going to handle reverb pedals very well. Or at least in my opinion, it doesn't. Now, I did. I used a more Shimverb Pro for a little while. It's recently stopped working and I can't really demo that. But um, if you were gonna use this live, I would say just ask the sound man to put reverb on your microphone or uh, try wet dry if you really need it. But once again, it's kind of amazing how little reverb you really need. Like we always think that we need to drench everything in reverb, but you really don't. So uh, 
you know, no, you don't have a whole lot of reverb capabilities. Delay, it'll probably handle delay well too, but um, it'll still come out distorted for the most part when you go in through the front of the amp. But it'll handle it. The reverb, ah, uh, not really. At least not in my opinion. So, but that's okay, because you don't need it. You really don't. And it kind of changes the way you play when you play without reverb. Reverb's really good at hiding your, your problems. So, um, anyways, thank you for checking out this video. I hope uh, I've inspired some of you guitar players out there that are looking for a really good, really cheap amp to go out and get one because I, I can't endorse it enough. You know, I really just want to make a video to say how much I love it and the fact that it's cheap and a lot of you guys can get it too for next to nothing. So, in the meantime, do me a favor, like the video, comment and subscribe, and maybe I'll make more videos. Uh, who knows?